G'day, how you going? Ian Apolis here, your acrylic guru from Australia. Welcome to my YouTube channel. Just want to get some sizes on the canvas panel there before we get started in centimetres and inches. And as always, I'll get some colours going up the screen there as well. All right, now this is going to be a nice, easy subject, but quite effective when it's finished. A uh, nice, big, massive moon over the harbour or over some water there at night time. All right, so you can add whatever you want to this, but watch the video and see how I do it and work out if you want to do it the same or mix and match it up a bit. And there's also a uh, notice in the beginning of my um, video there, a copyright notice. That's just saying that the video file is my content. You're welcome to copy the video painting subject and paint the painting. It doesn't mean don't copy that. It means do not copy the actual video file, all right? Do not upload it and download it and upload it somewhere else as your video, all right? So come on over here. Now I've got some craft paint. I'm just going to wet my brush a bit in the water. Okay, it's just wet, just so as this will flow off my brush. Now I don't have any retarder in this. Okay, I'm just gonna try something different. Just so as I can prime in this panel. Okay. So I'll get mainly the sky half done, and if I've got enough left over, well, we can go to the water. Now, why I haven't got retarder in it is because I'm not doing a, a lot of blended colours like I normally do for a sky. I'll get the bottom done as well. I'll wet the brush just a little bit more, just so we get beautiful movement of that paint across the canvas there, like that. <laughs> oh, yeah, I'm liking that, yeah. Now that wasn't too hard, was it? Just got your canvas panel painted in craft paint. Now a lot of people have asked, do I gesso my canvases? No, if they're gessoed, they're gessoed. Nine times out of 10, the ones I have are gessoed, but I'm always putting this craft paint on in the beginning. All right, I've cleaned that brush and my next color is dark scene purple. I've got some black here as well because I want to darken some of this up when I've got the dioxine purple onto the canvas. So let's start at the top, get the sky right across there, bring it down, crisscross it down to the horizon, pick up some more. Now the white, that's why I put the white on there because it's going to allow it, wet the brush a bit, to lighten up a bit so it's not massively dark. And we'll get this. right across the canvas, pretty much to our water line. Now I'm getting some water here into the paint, there we go. And I'm just going to massage that in. Now it's pretty uneven, I'm looking, I can see, which is fine, it's the sky. Pick up some more, and we're gonna come all the way down to the water line. I'm virtually painting the whole canvas. My horizon line's gonna be about that high. I'll wet the brush just a little bit more again because it's kind of dragging. Okay, we've got the dioxine purple on there. Pick up some more and work out where you might want it dark. About here, nice dark band there. And just keep rubbing that in. Now I'm going to pick up the black and get our darker value in there. So I'll pick up some of this black now. I'm gonna get it all across the edge of my brush. I'm just using a flat two inch synthetic brush from the hardware here. So just like a big flat, really. And the top, get it onto the top. <coughs> kind of X stroke it down into the painting so it's bringing it down instead of just having it like a big stripe. <laughs> Beautiful. And we'll pick up some more. And we'll just add some more darker values, probably where I want the water line. Okay, so I'll get it across there like that, and then cr crisscross it up. So if anything, we've the sky's got the dark and light at the bottom and top of it, the sky side of the horizon line. Get it up there. This is a quite an easy painting to do. There we go. Finessing it. Okay, 
Okay, before that dries, I'll just get some stars. I'm using the craft paint. I've wet it down a little bit just so I can flick some stars. I don't want too many because before we add the moon, we need some stars in the sky. So let's just get some there. Beautiful. I'll get a bit more paint on there. This is going to be a big moon. Okay. That's pretty much I'll do the stars. Okay, before I dry it or anything, I want to do... I know I'm going to have the big moon here, okay? So I want the water flickering on the surface, the light. So from about here... Just around here, where the water's going to be. Probably can come out there a little bit, but I want it concentrated, as you can see in this area. I haven't masked up the horizon line because they can be stars, whatever go up there. All right, let's just try that. Now we're going to grab our big brush. My horizon line is right at that black. I hope I don't ruin it. Shouldn't do. And we'll just start from there and lightly pull the water. Okay. And that has worked perfectly. I'll turn the brush around just to get this other bottom bit. There we go. Now I'm just blow drying this because I've got to put my moon cut out on there. And that's why I didn't use retarder because this paint now can dry. Where if I had retarder over it, it'll dry, but it'll act rubbery and wet underneath and it won't be good for your painting. Now down here I've got different pieces of laminated paper and acetate cut out. I've cut different circles out of it. So I've got all different size moons, even like normal paper, then you laminate it. It acts as a good stencil as well. Now I have the size I want to use, which is here, quite a big one. I know I, know I wanted a big one in this. So we'll put that onto the canvas. So work out where you want your moon. I know I want mine there from where I put the reflections. Okay. So what's next? I've got phalo blue and I've got titanium white and we want to gradiently tone and shadow and shade that moon. So grab yourself a kitchen sponge. I always use this one. It's got a fine, it's got fine pores in it. So what I'll do is I'll give it a bit of a wetty wet wet on there so it'll transfer better. Now what I'm going to do first is pick up the phalo blue and tint in me moon, or stamp in the moon, its shadow area. Because the moon is, let's get that on there, in front of the stars, the stars are further away. So what I'm going to do is just stamp on there. Now if I didn't wet this sponge, it would not have been able to transfer onto the canvas as well as what it is doing. I'm just gonna do the whole moon first and that'll allow a foundation to do the rest of the brighter colors of the moon. Now take your time, use a big flat at a table at home, it'll probably be a lot easier than on an upright board. You don't have to do paintings like this on your easel. You can lay them on a towel on your kitchen bench or on your kitchen table and then go for it. So we've pretty much got our whole dark footprint of our moon there okay that's on there everything's wet I want to start mixing up some white now before we do let's give that a bit of a spray as well just so we get transferring happening and we want the dark side of the moon now we're going to create the dark side of the moon so we're mixing this up to a value which is probably I'm reckoning that's getting there. So that's the footprint of the moon. Let's say the dark side of the moon's this side here. Get it a little bit more. See how the white 
it's showing up. So we'll get that uh, about there. A good sponge, find out what sponge is going to work for you. Now I want to fix that line up a bit better in the middle there, just so it's not so deliberate and messy and no finesse about it. And get this side of the moon done. Now play with it till it's the value you want. Once this video is finished, well you saw the picture in the beginning, go back and pause it on there and see how it's looking. And now we'll fade that. You want it the right value, okay? And the darker color I put on there first just added the footprint for it. Now back down here, I haven't, I'm still on that same side of the sponge. Now I wanna, I've put some water down there and I want the white bright side of the moon painted now. So I'm going to use this. Now we want the bright side done. So we'll start around the edge bring it to that blue and bring it in. Now it's not the brightness I want just yet, but we'll get it there. We'll feed it backwards and forwards until we're happy with the transition. See, I want this color transitioning with that. Pick up some more white. There we go, it's happening. And if you feel you've put too much white or the brighter color into the darker color, you can See, I've sort of come in there a little bit. You can step that back with the darker colour. All right, I'm going to leave it though. That looks fine. Now we want that a bit more whiter. So back down here, I'm going to turn my sponge around. I sprayed this with water. Okay, and I want to pick up, load your sponge up. So I'm loading it up where I know it's going to stamp onto the moon. And we want this side of it done nice and white now. About to there, there, and start bringing it in. Don't go too far back into that other blue, if you can help it. Get some more on there. Oh, that's very bright. I'll dab that. I'll keep dabbing that. That'll kiss it down. There we go. Now we've got the bright side of the moon and the dark side of the moon and it's not just a line. You've seen how I've done that. Watch it a few times if you think you can't handle it. And it all takes practice. Now you don't have to do this but this colour is under the white. I'm going to grab one of my fingers here. The glove axe is a good paintbrush and I will kind of just pull in some, there we go, just very lightly, I'm going to pull in some crater. Just something like that to add moon features in there, okay? Just so in a hole it'll look quite moony. It does look a bit so I can just soften them down a bit. There we go. So we've got craters in there. And if you want, which I'm going to do, I'm going to give that white a bit more crispiness within it. Okay, so I've just loaded up that sponge on that very edge again, and just the very edge. Let's just give it a bit more white there the real bright, bright side of it. And having these templates help you master a quite a simple and effective moon. Sometimes it doesn't hurt when you do that very edge just to, uh, uh, oh, some bit went in the middle there. Just like that, you see. Okay, I'll pull the template off. Hopefully I don't pull any of my paint off. There we go, we've got a reasonably bloody good moon there, okay? Just floating in the sky, the stars are behind it. Now 
I've dried that. I'm going to, I'm not quite happy with the way this water is okay. So that's why I say watch the video first. You could probably paint your sky, paint your moon, then add your water up to this stage of the video. But I've already done it. I'm just going to mask up the bottom where I want it. And I probably want the moon maybe dipping into the water a little bit. Let's say about there, okay? It's just dipped in. So let me just lightly mask that up. Okay, just so we don't get anything on our top half. We've done such a good job there. Now what I'm gonna do is grab the water again and do that. So what I'm gonna do, the left, I wanna use the dioxine purple and the blue that's left there, the phalo blue, not cerulean blue. I'll pick up my brush and I'll mix these up so I'll get like a darker bluey purple going. Okay, so let's get our water in again. Get it onto that horizon line. Nice and blue, beautiful. Wet your brush a bit so we're gonna get good transferring here. Now I've had no retarder in this. It's a different value blue, which is good. It's nighttime water reflection blue. We can add some white to this as well later if we need to. I'll just show you what I mean. I want to get it all colored first. Wet that brush a little bit more. Now for all that paint underneath, if I had retarder on it, it'll be ripping it up by now and making a dog's breakfast out of everything. Now I want to pick up some white. I'm just scooting it onto me brush here like that, just on the tips of it. And we'll probably have a nice glow out here. There we go. This is gonna look better. So aren't you glad you watched the video all the way through before you started painting? Because you wouldn't have made that mistake I made. Now we'll get our toothbrush. Okay, so we're going to pretty much start the light hitting the water again. Now I've been making, see my brush, it's got nothing in it. When it's full of paint, it's hard to flick. I've discovered you keep cleaning it and you watch this will flick so much better than before. Now I want it mainly under that moon. Look at that, it's flicking. I've got control over it, mainly under that moon. This is all the moon hitting the water. See, there's not much in the toothbrush. Some there, pick up some more. Where before, you know, you've seen me doing it and I'm having trouble getting it out. It's because the toothbrush was too loaded with too much paint and it became gluggy. And the actual thickness of the paint within the toothbrush was not letting it move and flick the way it's flicking now. I want it nice and intense on the horizon line there, just like so. Now I'll get that big brush and carefully pull it again, just very softly. Yes. Yes. See, I've got to clean this brush. See these big marks there? That's because it had dry paint in it and act like a big scratch. But we'll get by. I've got to clean that brush, that's all. Now we'll take the tape off. And you can see now that water from before looks a bit better. Just give this a dry so I can finish it off with the tree. Okay, I've got the carbon black. And we're going to put in the foreground and a tree. So just probably around the, the bottom here, just a yeah, minute. And what this is doing, for those of you who might not be aware of it, this is just setting everything back within the painting. And this is just a very small foreground. Now, it can be grass, it can be hard surface, whatever you want it to be. Now we'll just see if that's going to pull up. Yeah, we can do that. 
just to pull it up in front of that. There we go. And then we'll just put a tree to one side. I'm just going to use direct black. I'm not going to put any blues or reds or browns in it. I'm just going to use direct black for this. And I've just got that paint watered down a lot more. Now this tree is pretty close to us, so it's going to come from the ground and pretty much go off the painting. So we'll just have it off the edge a bit there. Don't worry if it's breaking up, just get it where you want. That'll do, okay, just like that. That's only half the trunk. And we'll get some of the, the bottom again. The thickness, now we're making the thickness of this tree and we might have another branch, getting it a bit smaller. About there. Oh, actually, it can come right off the painting, actually. Now I'll, I'll map in all of this, okay? Just map it in. Now I'm telling you, if that had all retarder in it, this will be pulling it up. I would have to wait a good day before I can paint over that. That's why I deliberately had no retarder. Now I'll just put a branch that looks like it's coming from the tree and going outwards into the ocean and the thing there. So I want it a bit thick. And it's going out into, a bit skinny as I go, towards the moon there. Let's get that a bit skinnier out there. There we go. And there's lots of other junk coming off here as well. And probably just one coming off there. That'll do for our tree. Find yourself a liner brush, get your paint rolled within it. You want it quite inky. And we'll do the thicker ones first, which are pretty much going to be thinner of what we just put on this. And always cross things over. Now with this brush, see what I'm doing? I'm twisting it. Boom. And it just makes a natural artistic looking branch. Now I'm gonna come here, go up, cross things, come off the painting, get some more on that, you know, get these branches crossing each other. I'll come off here, these ones here, and we'll because if anything, these are going to be spider webbing, get up here, come down, these are the main ones, twist it, look at that beautiful, and then you want other ones coming off these, crossing everywhere, crossing over everything, okay, coming off here, find those gaps and cross them over everywhere. Get something off here going out there, bending down. Something else coming off there, maybe bending down here. Let's get some of this white, maybe a bit of black in it, a little bit. And we'll just put a signature on here, and then we can whack a frame on it, eh? And if you're new to my channel, check out the links in the description below. Share, like, and subscribe. Check out my merchandise. And remember, all my tutorial paintings are for sale. And I want to thank my patrons who support my content every month. Thank you very much for that. It helps me out a great deal. Gee, this autograph's a little bit on the big side, isn't it? 
All right, let's whack a frame on that. There we go, that's not too shabby, hey. Got a massive big nighttime moon, half full, half bright, whatever you call it, artistically looking. It looks like a piece of art and a nice tree just welcoming the moon into the painting, okay? And just remember something like that, you can do it. I hope you enjoyed this tutorial. Looks all right, doesn't it, eh? Tell your friends if you like what I'm doing, but if you don't like what I'm doing, you tell everybody, all right? All the best, goodbye, good luck, and good on ya.